this album is already a big improvement on uh, Queen's debut album, uh, their self titled debut album, Queen. Um, yeah, I've reviewed this album, so if you want to know my opinion about that record, then check it out. Um, yeah, today I'm doing the second one. Um, yeah, more Queen on the channel. Love the band. Um, not the biggest fan of their albums, though. Uh, the thing is with Queen, they are a bit of a greatest hits band. That is why they uh, sold like a lot. Um, yeah, I believe they're one of the best selling uh, albums of all time, those greatest hits albums. Um, so yeah, I love the songs, but they don't have the best records in my opinion. But you know, their 70s material is really uh, consistent and in the 80s it became really uh, uh, crowd rock or it became really uh, arena rock. Um, yeah, it is arguably on there as well, but you know, it is still in a classical way. Which I really enjoy. This album is, by the way, requested by. Uh, yeah, I'm actually not sure. Um, I believe Black Queen requested all these uh, Queen videos, while well, all these I believe he requested uh, for. Some 70s Queen uh, Queen albums that I didn't review yet, so there we are. Uh, Queen 2 is definitely a highlight in their career. I really, really like the atmosphere on this record, and that it is separated into uh, two. Parts. It is uh, you have a side one and you have a side two, and side one is the white side, which portrays all the um, all the positive things about uh, I believe being a queen, um, right? Yeah, of of a queen, and uh, there maybe it is a metaphor for themselves that they uh, show their positive side, their their good side on the on side one, and their dark side on side two. Which is a pretty pretty interesting um, uh, thing to do. So if you know, um, if you personally know the story about this record, then let me know in the comments down below because uh, I'm curious to know. But for now, the thing that I have made up, I think it's pretty interesting, and I'm going with that. I may, I may or may not talk out of my ass, but whatever. Uh, the first side is almost entirely written by Brian May and the second side is written by uh, entirely Freddie Mercury. Uh, except for the song The Loser in the end, uh, which is the fifth song written by Roger Taylor, the drummer. So the only one that didn't write on this record is John Deacon. Um, and yeah, Procession is a intro song, really, really classical uh, intro, really gets you... Um, ready for the record uh, an instrumental uh father to son was pretty good um it is the no it isn't the longest song of the record but i quite enjoy the song it is really poppy in a sense um yeah and it is just really enjoyable it's yeah um i believe this isn't a a big hit no it actually isn't but it showed that queen was uh, there to stay and um, it is already a bit of a, um, a show. It is already a song that was um, giving a sign for uh, Queen that they were going to become commercial. And that uh, that is what they show with the Father to Son. Um, yeah, the lyrics, you know, it isn't really interesting. It is just basically Father to Son talk uh, wrapped up in a Queen song. So it is, um, yeah, I have to say, pretty boring because. I'm not the biggest fan of the um, of the song. It is pretty long, so it drags on a bit. So this is this isn't the best song. Um, White Queen, however, I think is one of the best. The the title track of the White Side, uh, the third one. Uh, yeah, the song is mostly acoustic, and um, I, I I think the Mercury sings great on there, written by May. The song is really light uh, light toned. Um, it is really light in tone, no pun intended. Uh, really love the acoustics on there. Really relaxing track to listen to. Four and a half minutes of uh, pleasure. Uh, yeah, don't get anything out of that. Uh, whatever. If you know what I mean. But uh, White Queen is a uh, just a really relaxing track, and uh, yeah, it it's purely it is the centerpiece of the record, and it really shows what. Uh, what this album is uh, all about. White Queen is the definition of the white side. And later we get a song about the Black Queen. 
Um, Sunday One Day is also a good track, you know. Um, I, I think the title is a bit nonsensical. Sunday One Day, which is basically the same thing. Um, yeah, it is a dumb title, and Brian May sings on there. I, I quite enjoy his, uh, his vocal deliveries on there. You know, you can't beat Mercury by, um, you know, no one can beat Mercury. But Brian May um, comes, well, he, he doesn't come close. I mean, let's be really honest. But, um, but he still sings pretty good on this part, and uh, his uh, guitar work is uh, great. Um, yeah, I actually. Uh, really like the solo track by uh, by Brian May. I only think the, the title is really dumb. Someday, one day. Basically the same thing, but whatever. The loser in the end is a um, yeah. In my opinion, it is one of the weakest tracks on this record. Um, you know, it is written by Roger Taylor, and his lead vocals are on the um, on the loser in the end. And I wouldn't say he is the loser in the end. No pun intended. But yeah, I, I think his, uh, his vocal delivery is a bit off. I wouldn't say it's really bad, but uh, you know, it is decent for what it is. He is a singing drummer and he is a good one at that. But it is a bit off sometimes. And um, But what I really uh, like about his vocals is that um, it, is a, it, it is a bit raspy. Um, yeah, it, it, it sounds a bit um, just yeah like that recipe like i said and I, I i quite enjoyed it with the raw drums of roger taylor which is a really great combination i just don't think it is the best thing to close at white side uh side one the white side so it is a good song but it, it is a bit out of place for uh for the album for what what the album is trying to do uh then we get to ogre battle which is pretty in your face it um uh, personally, I, I don't think this is a uh, amazing track. I still really like it, but um, I think overall that the song is a bit too much lead uh, vocals and not enough instrument instruments, not a lot, of, uh, not a lot instrumentation. Uh, it still is a good opener to uh, Ogre Battle, but um, but I but I think that. That ogre battle, ogre battle should have been um, should have had a bit more uh, instrumentals to really give it that battle uh, team, that maybe Viking team stuff like that, which it didn't really have, but it was still really a greatly greatly delivered by Freddie Mercury. Um, yeah, the Freddie Feller's masterstroke. The fuck is that name? Nevermore. Nevermore is actually quite nice. Um, I quite enjoy the instrumentation on this record and the vocal melodies by Mercury, but unfortunately it is only a transition to... Yeah, I have to say it, the March of the Black Queen, it is the, um, the centerpiece, it is uh, the centerpiece of black, the black side, side too. Uh, yeah, this song is just epic and it is one of the, the greatest songs of, um, of early Queen. Arguably of all time, but I wouldn't go that far. Uh, this is actually together with uh, Roger Taylor. He sings lead vocals on this as well. And this is the longest song as well on the record. Um, yeah, I just really love the dark tone. The really um, the instrumentation on this track are just perfect. The vocal deliveries by Mercury at the end. Do you mean it? Do you mean it? Just that that part is just. Uh, great to listen to. I just really, really love this track. How dark and how mellow, mellow, mellow. <laughs> how uh, mellow it is. And um, yeah, I just think that this is a great track. Uh, one of the best early Queen tracks. I just really love it. Uh, you have to listen to it a lot to really get into it because early Queen is a bit more difficult to get into. Uh, you know, records such as. Such as uh, the fuck um a kind of magic how how are the eight um they're a bit forgettable though the, their 80s record so it's, it's a bit of uh it's quite hard to remind them uh, fuck man I, I have to look it up um uh, jazz is still 70s uh the game uh the work the works yeah that's true uh kind of magic miracle 
Uh, you know their 80s stuff, it, uh, it isn't as commercial as their 80s stuff, but it, is st it still shows that Queen um, is one of the best bands of all time with their songs. I'm not the biggest fan of their records, but, but still uh, Queen 2 and the March of the Black Queen are just highlights, man. They're ju just great. Uh, Funny I Love Is is a bit generic, I would say. Um, it still really blends in well together uh, for the last song, which I will get into. Uh, Funny I Love Is is um, uh, mainly glam rock, and that is one thing I don't like, but uh, Queen is one of the exceptions that actually can make glam rock, uh, can do glam rock right. Um, yeah, the song is uh, really poppy, it is really uh, mostly lead vocals, uh, Mercury. Uh, it, it is just Mercury all over the place and uh, all the other band members are a bit in the shadow. That is kind of the, the thing with lead singers, but there we are. But it, it especially is present on Funny I Love Is. It is still a good song, but I think like um, Ogre Battle, Freddie Mercury is a bit in front and doesn't let the other band members breathe. Uh, but I still think it is a good song, you know, but a bit more instrumentation should be good. And then we get the Seven Seas of Rive, which has a perfect piano intro. And it was actually the first ever song by Queen, I believe, Seven Seas of Rive, from their debut record. Um, but it was only one minute on that, and it is almost three minutes now. Um, I really love the, the solo through the centerpiece. Really love the vocal deliveries by... Uh, but Freddie Mercury, they are great to finish out this uh, this record, and um, overall, I would say that um, you know I think it's a good album, but I think the black side recovers the white side because I think the white side is a bit weak. Um, you know, you have, you still have some great songs like uh, White Queen and Loser in the end, which I think are great tracks, but you know the white side isn't really that good but black side is uh, really great really love nevermore the march of the black queen and seven seven seas of rye uh so yeah this is a pretty good record i would give it a um what should i give it an eight and a half i think it is a good record but you know it isn't perfect and queen you know they don't have the best records but they have great songs that that is that is why these per, uh, the, these greatest hits albums are, in a sense, so um, so beloved because Queen doesn't have one record where everything is just perfect. Well, you can say another to Opera, but even that, you know, even that is really poppy. Uh, but I hope yeah, not that not that that is a bad thing, but still, um, I don't think that there's. Well, yeah, actually, I think there's a perfect queen record, but maybe if that is requested, I'm going to do that, but we will see. I hope you've enjoyed this album, album review. Let me know what you think about um, about Queen 2. I thought it was a pretty good record, one of her best, but, you know, um, not quite yet. But still a pretty good record. Let me know what you think about, um, about this record. Let me know what you think about Queen. Do you think they're tremendously overrated? Do you think they're underrated? Well, yeah, they can, but... Whatever, do you think early Queen is underrated or something? Uh, let me know in the comments down below what you think about Queen and <coughs> take care.